locked in on the other side for Dom one here as we're starting to see very clear champion priority. Another reminder, banned from blue side in the Lucian. Angel isn't willing to grab it. I think they're just going to look to trade the Jin uh, great, so I guess they can pick that later. Something that is important to note, the champions are usually synergize super well with Nidalee. They're running into Camille top, and of course uh -huh. the Twisted Fate, the Leona as well, although these are banned, so letting Nidalee go. I think there's something that you can play around with, the idea that the enemy needs to pick Graves on three. Maybe they pick top lane already here, two, three, because it's going to be hard to counter pick it already there on third, because they need to pick Graves. And you're always, I know, very high on synergy. Don't just pick the things because they might just fit by themselves. Make sure that you have synergy between your lanes. <laughs> and uh, right now, we're not getting no. out of that. Um, it seems like it's going to be a pretty skirmish heavy, every man for themselves, high agency on all Ooh. of them. We expected <laughs> setup to be available. Um, Yamada was just talking about, you know, with a uh, Nidalee, those champions that provide hard CC and setup, Renekton, Camille, Leona, Ash, Twisted Fate, things like that. You said gone. comfort, well, hey. <laughs> I think right now, Suni is asking the question, are you going to pick the Graves? How deep is your champion pool, Nuguri? Because you need to pick Graves on three, and we're going to be able to ban two additional champions <laughs> that might be counters into the Jax Akali. Or are you just going to go for the Lulu? Is he going to go for the Lulu? Is that what you're going to do, Nuguri, against me? That just carried the game and pentakilled? Maybe that's the case. Oh, oh I love it. The call out <laughs> to the pentakill, the first one in a world's final. Ever. That's got to give you some confidence, and there we go. And like Yamato was saying, now you get to pinch the pools even farther to make sure that you can create necessary strong sides to the map. If that means that you throw more bands at the top side to make sure that Ben is just going to get to thrash whoever goes up there, or if you start sculpting something like your bot lane. Um, other big high priority picks are obviously going to be the support pool, um, and again, finding necessary setup. You know, what's sad is from, you know, from a point of view of if I just remove name tags, you know, Orr is still pretty good here. Yeah. That's what's so sad. So there is still a chance that that Orr might just get picked. And I know that it's easy to get carried away after a game like that where Orr got annihilated and, you know, the Jacks and the Fioras are all over the place. But uh, looking at the things that usually work, Orr is still a fine pick here. And that's why I think last game was so important because it finally kind of broke the better team fighting top laner. You know, Orn versus Fiora. Everyone's going to say that Orn is the better team fighting top laner. And a lot of these team fights are being decided by the top lane champion. But the fact that Suning won the last game with a performance with a champion like Fiora, I think can flip the entire series on its head. So the idea is just to remove all the supports and just fourth pick Pantheon. But I know I don't know if it is the right idea here to leave the Ezreal because Ezreal is going to be that champion that is going to tie this composition together, give you something to always play for with that two core power spike. There is a lot of question though on kind of what Sword Art will reach for next. If someone is having a weak series on the side of Suning so far in two games, it is going to be Sword Art. So if it is the Pantheon like you're talking about after banning away the Ooh. Bard and the Thresh, although leaving it for uh, last pick to make sure that Barrel and uh, Ghost can get the stronger 2v2, like where does Sword Art actually go from here? Probably still prioritizing set, yeah. a heavy engaged champion like the set, but he's been really running out of options. And even on his big pick of Leona, he hasn't looked that strong. And it's not a counter pick for the top lane. It is the cannon, which we've seen from Nagori before, betting all in on those team fights as well. To be fair, the, the cannon matchup should be good into Jax, but Ben's Jax is just something else. He won against Renekton, he won against Orn. He's doing <laughs> things that, uh, you know, maybe he's going to go Halo Blades and win against a cannon. I don't know. <laughs> you know, on paper, this should be super winning against cannon, but I don't know what to trust anymore. Alistar blind pick, I think, is quite dangerous. I'm hoping Barrel is ready to play Gragas. The nice thing about um, Alistar, especially LPL Alistar, in this case an LMS Alistar, uh, is how it works against Kennen. If Kennen comes in and if Sword Art's on point, he just needs to play goalkeeper and just kick that little rat straight out of it. And then also <laughs> Baron defense. If uh, Suning are ever in a position where from blue side, they get control over the Baron pit, LPL Alistars love to stand on the back of the Baron pit and again, play goalkeeper. It's something that these teams run again and again. So watch Sword Art's positioning when when it comes to those big Baron fights. Well, we've got a goalkeeper in the Alistar and Ezreal who has a cool football skin. And as you said, it's going to be the Ezreal. So why does Ezreal round out this comp so well? Because Ezreal is never weak. He's always going to be strong. He's go always going to give you something to play for. He's going to be able to you know, cover a lot of distance. He's going to be able to gain a lot of mid control. Braum last pick is surprising, but I guess There's Braum or set, <laughs> set, I would love set, yeah. I think it also then empowers um, the fact that they don't have a lot of CC built into their composition, so adding something like a Braum is going to help sprinkle that CC around. So far in Suni's comp, uh, Suni's comp really great uh, breakpoints on one and two items especially. Then you do have hyperscaling in the form of the Jax playing a 1-4 and being very safe with the Ezreal. On the other side for Dom one, this is a very front-to-back teamfight-oriented composition with really strong, high 2v2 jungle mid. Look 
looking at Dalmas' composition, I think early game is going to be super, super easy for them. If they manage to snowball, this game is going to be fine, but some of the items that Suning can buy, Mercuries, it, they have very, very slippery champions in the Kali and Jax. If these champions get ahead, it's over, but Dama need to snowball from minute one. It's also so hard just to kill Sword Art late game. It is. We do have a little bit more time, even though okay. that was a oh, great we final. Like, oh, God, God. <laughs> yeah, we're still going to wait. But uh, you know what is so cool about this is because of the last game and because of Suning winning with champions that aren't necessarily the ones they're supposed to win with, all of a sudden you have a whole different playing field in these picks and bans. It's just so crazy because SOFM in this particular game is going to have a very, very tough job ahead of him because he has Jackson to Ken in top, doesn't have Pryo. Akali against Syndra, doesn't have Pryo in mid. Bottom is Alistair support, no Pryo at all. If Canyon finds opportunity to invade and snowball early, then super cool. But if, if SWM finds a way to solve this puzzle, then it's going to be a crazy game. He throws the game. puzzle out of the window. That is what SOFM does. Syndrome usually. Nidli, yes. Yes, that's what he does. So no. let's see what happens. Fantastic drafts on both sides. We're going into game three. So Trevor and Vedias, take it away. Thank you so much. We're jumping into game three. Sooning bounce back after a loss in the very first game of the World Championship Final. The winner here will be on match point. Two Nexuses is all it takes to be crowned the 2020 World Champion. So, so far from Suning, we have seen LPL Fiora. Yes. We have seen Radar Rengar. Yes. And now we get to see the Angel of Death Whoa. on his special Akali Champion. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> oh my word. So I first wanted to talk about how Angel is often not put in a position to carry, but when he does, he has a phenomenal performance. His Akali is really terrifying. Kobe has already called him the Angel of Death once, and I'm hoping we get to see it once again today. Um, and it's going to be really exciting to watch. But let's now talk about this Omni Stone. Which one? Uh, How about both? <laughs> so, SOFM loves throwing me curveballs. And yes, he does. <laughs> He's not making this easy for you, Mr. Day. So, I will say the Omni Stone Jax is a little bit more understandable, a little okay. bit more. Yeah, so you I that think loosely. That, yeah, so I think that... Um, First thing I'm going to do is you should always default to trust, especially with teams in the World Final. And uh, I think that... One of the main reasons as to why you run things like Omni Stone into range matchups, we saw it from Wonder when he played Scion into the Lulu. I think that many top lane champions can actually take advantage of a wide array of the runes that you are given, and it seems to me that he feels that there's no real value of taking something like a Conqueror because he won't be able to fully stack it up, perhaps against a Kennen, or perhaps he doesn't feel that the Hail of Blaze is not for that value, so he's like, why not just take a little bit of everything into a yeah. matchup where it feels like that there is no uh, solid, strong answer to it. So. I think I understand it in the top lane. In the jungle, I'm a little bit more confused. Typically, you expect something like a Dark Harvest when running in Italy. That's usually the most common. Um, and to be fair, we haven't even seen that many Nidalees so far this tournament because of how often they're banned. I mean, like, look, he, he's just able to proc the yes. Omega Q off of his Q plus E combo. He's now going to grab himself the Phase Rush. Like, um, yeah, I don't know what Dark Technology SOFM has uh, concocted. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It's another learning opportunity Look for us. Look at this. Bin, level two, jumps in again. And just a quick reminder, in case you missed the previous matchup, that uh, Bin was able to pick up the very first pin to kill in World Finals history. Game one was incredibly close between these two teams. Game two with the Rengar, the Radar Rengar into Evelyn. And now we get ourselves double Omni Stone. And what I love about the draft as well, Nidalee first pick into then Jax and Akali. And Canyon will be jumping in, double buff. We'll get down the smoke screen below 100 HP. Sidestep from end of the line, underneath the tower. One shot and two. Canyon on the board with first blood. Big mistake there from Bin and good pathing from Canyon. The risk of SOFM starting on top side and pathing towards bot is that he's not there to cover what is a very volatile matchup. And Bin just held his flash a little bit too long. So Damwon already off to a very strong start as Canyon will draw first blood. Very, very nicely done. 600 gold the lead already. Canyon will be sticking around at the top. I'll pick up that scuttle as we caught a glimpse there as SOFM picking up on the bottom. And the headbutt, I think, actually pushed Ghost a little bit out of the range of that Mystic shot. Good damage onto Beryl. The reply, though, on the exhaust flash traded. 
Ghost will need to reload and ends up being a flash for an exhaust. So the problem here for Huangfeng and Sword Art is that Ghost has a huge sustain advantage. Remember we talked about this earlier on in the series where when you're running boots plus health pots, the large reason as to why you do it is because you want to trade. So when Huangfeng commits to a trade like this, he's now the one at a disadvantage because he's only got the BF Sword left versus the four health pots that are still available on Ghost's side. Good damage from Angel onto Showmaker, playing very aggro as you saw Showmaker low on mana. So the possibility of reply plus SOFM had just happened to shadow that lane. Bin has already lost his flash from the previous gank. There's no support from anyone on the side of Dom1 Gaming and SOFM is making his way up. Wait for the minion line to move its way through and look for a long range javelin. That's one of the options. Or wait to see what happens with um, the lightning rush and of course then try to target him. But instead, SOFM backs away. So it seems to be a little bit of a split map as far as the junglers are concerned. And as Showmaker pushes forward, Canyon's able to invade. Good damage onto Angel Zakali in the mid lane. So while Angel Zakali is very well known, or at least has been so far in this tournament, Showmaker's Syndra is also very well known. When he played against Captain Zakali, he pressured so much in the laning phase. He was zoning the enemy Akali away from so much farm, generating a huge amount of harassment and just forcing the enemy Akali to burn teleport very early. And also now, look, he's pushing the wave. He's going to get a free recall. He already burnt his teleport earlier, but it doesn't matter. So now he's at a huge item advantage. There's only the Merc Tread sitting on top, and uh, he's playing this matchup extremely well. So much damage from Bin. Gets the Leap Strike, Empowered Auto, as well as that stun. So I will say that Bin is definitely playing this 1v1 very well. If yes. it weren't for that early gank that came out from Canyon, this matchup would have been a little bit better for him. But notice as well, Beryl now roaming in through the mid lane. He knows that the wave is stacking up. The risk of a gank isn't high, but he just wants to be there to cover a potential setup and also just kind of make his way through the river and uh, kind of check up on the river vision, see if there's anything that he can it's offer. It's another check-in that as the lane setup could show risk, you ring the barrel. Here comes SOFM this time around, level six. Tempest will go down, Javelin Toss flashed away from, so that will count as a successful gank. And Nogri has already been under a lot of trouble, even with the level advantage. Didn't quite have enough damage to pick up the kill. I think the fact that he just swapped over to the Ignite, though. May you want to look for a second try. So you can see that SOFM now in a great spot towards the top side of the map. Hang on, Angel and Canyon hovering around. So again, like a lot of this series, we've actually been seeing Canyon cover for his lane. So usually throughout this tournament, we've just been seeing him focus on his jungle matchup, whereas Barrel would then be the one to cover. But here, the moment Angel gets a little bit aggressive, Canyon's like, nope, I'll be here to cover. I'm here to offer assistance. Uh, and he actually mitigates any of the early pressure that Angel is looking to set up now that he's hit that level six mark. And then we see how Angel can play that. He's already played very, very aggressive, very, very forward into the face of Showmaker. And if nothing else happens here between SOFM and Nagari, just a very quick reminder that Angel and Akali, 207 KDA, plus 800 gold difference at 15 minutes. And he pops off. And for Angel as a player in his journey, um, especially in the series against Top, seeing him step up and shine on that pick was fantastic because as a player, he does tend to fall back and do what the rest of the team needs. He's a big team player. Yes. Like, I think that he is willing to sacrifice waves so that he can roam and support his team. And I think that the, when we look at the team dynamic, you're often talking about jungle and top lane. But I think the Angel, when he's put in a position to carry, can definitely do so. But now we see both carry junglers contesting over this blue buff. The Syndra does get to move, and a just quick smite still coming out from Canyon will allow him to secure that one. So kind of early jungle advantage is going in the favor of Canyon so far. Of course, did find that kill up top, has a slight CS advantage, and now the bot lane looking to get aggressive once more. Sordar gets the pulverized down. That slows down any further follow-up, but a lot of damage. Now the ultimates are traded back and forth. Grandmaster's might. Counter-Strike comes out. Here comes SWFM, manages to put the heal down to build the collateral damage over the wall. Canyon sends Bin back to the fountain. And in this situation, Bin thought that he was strong enough to go for an all-in trade, but the spell book comes through. The Ignite as well, and now SWFM taking a lot of damage, and Damwon is very quickly taking control over this early game. Repeated ganks up towards the top side, shutting Bin down in the early game is exactly what Damwon needed to try and get a foothold in this game. Imagine that, in game two of the world final, you get the first ever pentakill. And the reply from Dom One is, you now get dunked. We now <laughs> camp your lane. Yep. Good freaking luck, bro. 
And that means that Dom won two kills up and they're plus 1300 gold. And that Ignite swap was extremely uh, important there for Noguri because it just set up the damage for Canyon. So you can see here, Noguri already has a level advantage, but they know that Canyon, uh, sorry, SOFM is on his way. So he's like, okay, this is fine. I can make this trade happen. But Bin is diving into the middle of a minion wave and he thinks he's out to safety. But of course, the ultimate then comes through from Canyon. So he grabs himself another kill. And it's so important to recognize that this is the best of five. If you win this game, you are on match point. You have two more chances to win this series to hoist the Summoner's Cup, to start the presentation of being crowned the 10th world champion in League of Legends. And Dom One Gaming, they are off to a flying start. SOFM is, uh, correction, Sword Art, sorry, is now up in the top lane. Doesn't have access to his ultimate, but if he does manage to get a good, you know, pulverized combo, that plus Counter-Strike, it may just be enough damage from Bin to uh, take down Nugget. I do like this run from Sword Art. The stun will come through after oh, a flash. flash but men head, but pulverized, knocked up into the air. Nagari will go down as the trample from Sword Art's Alistair that picks it up. Sooning on the board. So this is the first big room we've seen from Sword Art this series, and it pays off massively. The wave was in a bit of an awkward spot for Bin. He needed that cover, and SOFM was on the bot side of the map. Now, the good news for Juan Vong is he does have this jungle assistance, so the risk of a dive is very low. But it also means that Suning will be able to get a kill on the board. It doesn't go into the hands of Bin, but getting that kill onto Noguri, I'm sure that Bin is not going to complain. And of course, it will open up this dragon. The fact that um, there was, you know, SOFM sort of correction up in the top lane. There was a little bit of cover there. Canyon gets a, a lot of time. He's already got the Warrior Enchant. Two and zero on this grave. Hex flash over the wall. Woo, I held my breath for a very brief moment. And Damwon Gaming, they're off to a very strong lead. There's pressure in the bottom lane. Two plates already secured. Sword Art's going to be very late to the party. And if you look at the minimap, Vadius, two members already pushing forward into the mid lane. So Angel, he's down 14 CS. SOFM and Canyon will run into each other in a brief moment with the help of Shelly. Here comes the engage, perfect execution all the way over and through. The flash away, Showmaker's caught out. Angel's low, he's down. The Unleashed Power will pick up the kill. There's a reply back, at least one for SOFM. But Beryl, with the help of the Winter's Bite, the stun will hold Sword Art in place. And the Rift Herald will get taken out by the tower, a one-for-one -one trade. As you rightly said, Quickshot ends up being a one-for-one. -one. A bit of a crazy skirmish there. A lot was invested to make sure that Angel wouldn't actually get that execute. And I think the fact that a kill went on to Showmaker and didn't go on to Angel is still very valuable for Darmon because it means that both mid laners won't benefit a lot off the XP, uh, but also Angel will be much further away from getting that first item upgrade, whereas Showmaker already very close to completing that Luden's Echo. Now Canyon making his way up top. 32 CS advantage for Noguri already. Bin is flashless in the top lane, but Angel's teleporting in from behind. He's got no ultimate for this fight. Sword Art's making his way up as well. The Counter-Strike doesn't find anyone, and Bin goes very low. Here comes Angel and Sword Art chasing. A counter teleport coming down from Showmaker. He will arrive in the top lane. And now all of a sudden the tower's under pressure. While that's going on, SOFM is helping out one thing in the bottom lane. I wondering. Yeah, okay, it looks like for the time being that not much answered is gonna come off the back off of Suning. It will be a trade of teleports in the mid lane. Oh, I really like this from Bin, the TP into mid. Just keep Angel top lane for now. He's gonna keep catching this waves, but in theory, you can push this wave in for Showmaker to lose a little bit of farm. Maybe even get yourself a play if you're lucky but it will also give Bin that very crucial level nine. He hasn't invested in any magic resistance just yet, but remember, Merc Treads, they have a lot of value in this game when playing against a Kennen, a Syndra, and a Braum. Uh, so I imagine to see those coming out from Bin soon as he now has the Predator uh, and his, uh, <laughs> his boots have now just come through. Oh, Omnisone is going to be very interesting as we continue to see how it's used. Bin during the laning phase, definitely sort of maximizing the value of how Omnistone works. SOFM, uh, for me, the jury's still a little bit out. I'll ask uh, Vedis to think about it a little more before we see how it impacts the course of the game. But we're in game three, and as Dunwan lost the previous, they had this, the choice of side. They elected red side. Nidalee first pick into then Jax and Akali. Jax 0-2-1, and then Akali 0-1-1. You can see the total gold on the side of your screen. We know the scaling options and the power that can come from a side lane play of this composition and Suning later in the game. But when you're down two and a half K gold and two dragons already, it is starting to look very, very scary on the LPL representative. Definitely is, Quick Shot. You're kind of looking at these two solo laners to 
Well, ideally, you don't want them behind in the early game, but that is definitely not the position that they find themselves in right now. SOFM and Sword Art once again covering for Bin, and that's been a lot of this game. You can see Huan Feng completely zoned away from his tower this time round, not going to have any kind of support. And Good awareness from Cannon as he's looking to steal away these camps. Now the dive. All right, there goes the dive. Head by Paul Bryce doesn't work. The slicing Maelstrom manages to hold Bin in place for now. The Glacial Fisher comes out from Beryl, and it's going to be a kill into Bin already. Being in the right place at the right time, you ring that barrel, and he saves Nagari's life. Exactly that. Quick shot. Beryl was aware of where Cannon was on the map, and he's like, my responsibility is to cover for the top lane. I have to be aware of any potential dives, and he is there to counter gank. Now, Cannon in the mid lane helping Showmaker shove this wave out. They could even look to contest for this tower. The wave claw on Angel is not that strong. It looks like they're committing. Yeah, so FM is just pieced out of this mid lane. He's going to steal a red buff. The scout of the week will find a stun, and the end of the line goes out. I think had Angel a little closer, maybe the collateral damage and um, unleash power, but not the case. So the tower goes down, the tower goes down top, it's three to zero, and that Goldie's at 5k. And I think this goes to show how flexible Dom One can be as a team. In game one, it was all about the Drakes. In game two, it was a little bit more about the scanning. Now in game three, they're all about the early game. All right, but trying to Augury, get some of those I think he's overextended strikes. here. Sword Art's coming Ooh. out, Javelin Toss goes back in, and Bin gets the first kill, that is huge. I mean, Sword Art really is camping his lane right now, but yes, Nogari, he overextends there, and I think the fact that he died while level 11 is actually gonna give Bin a lot of experience, so not a great death for Nogari, that's for sure, but in any case, it's still a 5k gold lead. Quick shot, like, Darm 1 have just dominated the early game. They have been extremely efficient in their farming, they've punished the weak solo laners, and. Now they just need to keep this pressure up because if the game slows down, Sooning will be able to ramp up and get their solar laners on. Man, just look at the itemization differences here. Ghost Blade completed for Canyon. Oh, that's so much damage onto Angel. Winter's Bite won't find its target. Shuriken Flip comes out as well. Wait, he can Angel kill Barrel. Steps inside the shot, waits for the shield to go down. Forced to dash away. Canyon's got the collateral available to him and he holds the trigger. There's no support from the rest of Sooning because they need to take the tower. And what I was trying to point out was the Void Staff in the Proto Belt already picked up for Nogari. He's got himself the Ghost and the Teleport. If Beryl picks the wrong route, he's still in trouble. Luden's Echo Sork Shoes for Showmaker. Showmaker, Showmaker, as well as the Infinity Edge and the Zeal for Ghost. That is a very, very significant gold lead. And we're on track again for like a 20 to 22 minute soul. Yep. Every game this series has been early Drakes. And Angel will at least sidestep that Dark Sphere. Oh, I like this from Angel. He has the damage, but he doesn't have ult. No ultimate available. Oh, he missed a Q. Throwing that's five that's, point that's strikes. pretty Doesn't big, have yeah. a damage yet. Unleash power comes out. SOFM will be able to chuck out the heal. Collateral damage is popped, and Sword Art's waiting in the wings. One small thing to call out, the fact that Showmaker's using the SKT skin is beautiful. This <laughs> dumb one. The first LCK representative in finals in three years. They are looking to regain control for South Korea, for the LCK. There is just a, a beautiful callback in, in that little skin choice. So, Dom One have basically split the map at this point. They're heavily playing through Showmaker as he hard pushed in the bot side. And Canyon and Beryl are just hard covering for him. Meanwhile, Nogari is playing on the weak side of the map. But the, the most important thing here is that Ghost is keeping pressure up in mid lane. So while he is effectively playing alone, he's also playing towards the bot side river, making sure that this wave is always pushed in. This means that SOFM hasn't actually been able to drop the Rift Held and actually use it to secure that mid tier one. So I wonder whether we're even going to be able to get value out of it because right now there aren't many places for him to. He might just have to throw it down to just try and generate some pressure because he can't even use it for the Drake because that's still three minutes away. So. Yeah, I, I think that Darmon right now just have such firm control over the map, and so much of it has stemmed from just a great understanding of how to punish these weak lane choices that uh, Sooning have in the early game. And I think it's very important to call out that that three or 4,000 gold lead has shrunk a tiny bit. Um, the kill that they managed to pick up on Tanagari, the tower in the top lane, and Sooning need to maintain this gold difference at minimum. If they concede anything more, if they give up this next soul, well, we find ourselves in a similar sort of situation to game one, but Damon with a significantly stronger advantage. The Predator for SOFM is there available. Thanks to the Omnistone teleport is going to be coming in here from Angel. But we're still two minutes away from the Dragon. That Rift Herald 
still not been thrown down. And you can see Suning, like, they're kind of fishing for opportunities, Vedius. That's a really big expenditure as well from Angel. He's going to be forced to hang around the bot side of the map right now. Bin is probably going to want to push that top lane in. But you've got to look at this situation and realize that Darmwon is better set up for it. They have the cannon. Uh, we heard the analyst test talking about how this is just a straightforward team fight comp from Darmwon. And while they are a little reliant on Noguri to act as that engage, his flash is up. He has Proto Belt. So Darmwon have everything that they need to contest this Drake, whether Suning like it or not. I do not think that even if Suning have better positioning, that they will be able to get this one for free. Well, Kenyon's coming in to help out in the bottom lane. SOFM's actually going to summon the Herald. There goes the Shroud as Angel's forced to step backwards. Kenyon's got access to the ultimate. Juan uh, Ghost, rather, was making his way down through the river. Juan Fang has continued to push in the mid lane. We're still a minute and a half to the Dragon. The Herald won't even get the charge off. Absolutely wasted. And this is what we talked about, right? Like, Darmon had such good control over the map that it was there weren't really any good options for Suning to use it. The best place was actually in the top lane when Bin was shoving in hard, and maybe they trade Tier 2 for Tier 2, but in the end, they weren't able to get anything off the back of it. And now the Drake is one minute away, having a look at the support inventories. We can see that Sword Art likely going to look to reset very soon because he's going to need to replenish those wards before the Drake spawns. Control wards are coming through from across the board. Bin has the teleport as well. He's pushing in the top lane. Noguri has already joined joined his squad. He's currently running with the exhaust. So there's double exhaust against the double solo laners from Suning. The more I look at this, the more I'm like, and do it. Dom one just seemed to have everything that they need to win out this team fight. Uh, yeah, and I'm not sure how Suning's going to be able to steal this one away. Now, when I look at this game, as we see Bin chasing forward, Counter-Strike is up, Showmaker's used the ultimate already. Bin forced to flash. He started this fight. Now he's being look surrounded. At collapse, yep. Look at the mini-map. Barrel's going to be able to chase, get the blast cone. They'll make it over the wall, but we'll tag the Winter's Bite. Not going to be able to follow up with a deadly flourish. And now Bin is just looking to get some damage back down. It'll buy a little bit of time as the Leap Strike over the minion. Six seconds until Dragon. Ironically, stalling this out makes it even more difficult because now you can't TP in. If the rest of Suning are able to delay, it's going to be 33 seconds before Bin can arrive. Nagari and Canyon are waiting in the wings. Sure, make a TP. Flash slicing Maelstrom. I've seen Nagari win games from this position. And just the threat alone means the Cloud Soul goes the way of Dom one one to one in the series, and they are in such a strong position. It's just been excellent early yes. game control from Dom one They haven't really uh, let the game go at any point, and it, it's just it's one of those things where if you pick too many weak lanes, Dom one will punish you. And I think that this is the first time in the series where they really shut Bin down, and you're seeing the consequences of it for Suning. He is such a big powerhouse when it comes to these team fights, even on the Jacks, but. So far in this game, he has not been allowed to get involved at all. And it looks like he's going for the Black Cleaver second. He's very far behind in terms of his itemization. Meanwhile, Ghost is very strong. The Graves has already completed his first Athali item. Like, that one is just in such a power position. And I think this is kind of what a lot of analysts and viewers and fans at home were expecting for the series, this type of game. I saw a lot of people anticipating Don wants to just 3-0 this series, be the stronger team, and this was the type of gameplay that many people were anticipating. As you can see, SOFM being run down here. Gets caught by a deadly flourish, and collateral damage plus curtain call sets up a kill. We're 22 minutes in. Dumbo are now going to start the Baron. I think it's important to recognize that after games one and two, soon improve not only can they compete, they can win. And if they are unable to win this game, they will have side selection for the next one. But there is drama at the Baron pit. Ghost is down Very nice. inside the pit. Angel continues to chase. The Glacial Fisher comes down from Barrel, but Canyon's the next target. Just as I am talking about Darmon winning, Suning find themselves a fantastic moment to pick themselves up three kills, maybe four, as Barrel goes down. That's the fourth. And now Noguri has joined the fray. Slicing Maelstrom is available, but I think there's too much to chew off this time. Let Electro hamster and he's running for his life. Angel's going for the hunt. Bin can hop over the wall if Nogri wants to. Angel is swinging those shurikens looking for a target. Nogri can flash inside the pit. There is SOFM coming from the wings. The gunplay goes down. There goes oh. the hop over from Bin. Perfectly executed and just at the last moment Angel takes down Nogri and this will open up the Baron Suning are right back in it. There is a reason why we dub him the Angel of Death when he gets his hands on Akali. When the replay comes up, just watch Angel. His positioning in the fight and the way he executed it was flawless. 
everything was going against Suning. Everything here, but just keep your eyes on the Akali. So first he dives onto the back line, uses his ultimate and E. He's drawing pressure towards him, dies over the wall, executes Ghost. Then he flashes back in, and the consistent damage that he's able to throw down onto Canyon as the rest of his team comes to assist. They then split up, and then he's able to get that kill later on onto Cannon. Not sure if we'll even get that play, but... I think that he was so instrumental in the way that he just kind of lured Damwon around the Dragon Pit that they were able to come out on top. And now they get themselves the Baron. Now they can buy a little bit more time. And now those solo laners, look at the levels, look at the items, they're really starting to come through. The pressure is on Damwon. They are playing in Shanghai in front of an audience that is very Suning favored. And Suning, after being down 5k gold, and they're still down the Cloud Soul. They picked themselves up a Baron, and now they have bought all the time they need to move into this mid and late game. They've got a lot of terrifying champions once they get to two to three hours. But if anything from the previous games, Vedius, it will come down to execution in the fights because they have been beautiful on both sides, and both previous games have been dancing on a knife's edge. So we haven't talked about it. We might not actually get an opportunity to. Oh, look at the damage oh, from Angel. Does he, he go in? I, I don't think he will, because Nogari's ultimate will just kind of keep him under town with the with the Braum there, uh, with Exhaust 2. It's a little too dangerous. But notice the itemization from SOFM. He has the Hextech GOP. Uh, he's been getting the um, Glacier Augment a lot with the Omni Stone Root Choice. And I think that this setup basically allows him to guarantee the spear. Now the TP flank from Nogari. Running, running, running! That's so much damage, cannot kick him away. Headbutt pulverized just to knock Nogari up in the air, but the teleport will get the kill for Huan Feng. Let's see what SOFM can do with that itemization, Vedius, that you were just alluding to. Top lane, Angel is pushing into the base. He's yes. opened the inhibitor turret. We are setting ourselves up for a dramatic ending TB here. Fine. Teleport coming in now. Nogri's going to make his way forward. I don't think he'll be in time to interrupt it. Angel joins the fray. Nogri's got no TP available because he used it to kill Huan Fung. Beryl's running for his life, and he stays alive just a few seconds longer as Canyon is the first to fall. Somehow, the rest of Darmon are able to escape. Ghost has got no flash and no heal and the damage that he's chucking out with this gin and the two-man stun from showmaker is helping down one out there's the defensive leap and sooning are backing away the, uh, the maelstrom's not available for nagri as looking at the cooldown and that will be the disengage for now. No inhibitor turret falls. So the important thing to note there is Angel got himself another kill. Level 15 now. Oh, hang on, Bin. Wait, That's what are you doing? A little bit of trouble playing very far forward. Yeah, that was a little too aggressive, if you ask me. But he will be able to get away with his life. So Domwon will kind of feel in the pressure. They saw an opportunity to use the teleport to get in behind Tuan Fung and get themselves a kill. The problem is they then had to send someone to deal with Angel split pushing in the top lane, who then had teleport. So Suning immediately respond with a TP flank of their own and get their own punish. The goal is now in Suning's favor. Itemization. Has Akali actually gone back to buy the Zonias? No, she hasn't, but yet. she does have the stopwatch. Doesn't have TP, doesn't have flash. The ultimate's coming back up. Ultimate plus Ignite for Nogari. This is going to be a huge fight. Elder Dragon is available. Four Elemental Drakes for Damwon. We're back at it again. Angel lingering over the wall. Flash will be up in just a couple of moments as Wan Fung is now fired off that True Shot Barrage. Mid lane is currently controlled by Suning, but Damwon can roll around to their tower and push it back. Wan Fung forced to use that Arcane Shift. Get away from Scatter the Weak, but you can feel the magnetic pull of Elder Dragon. That could be the deal breaker. Angel is caught out. The slicing maelstrom from Nogari. Stopwatch is used from Angel. He stays alive. The stun comes down from Bin. That will force Darmon to disengage, but the damage may already be done. Defensive leap strike as Canyon dashes forward. He's already used the collateral to pick up the kill into Bin. The rest of Suning are running for their lives as they're being flanked. Ring the barrel! As the Winter's Bite comes out, it doesn't find a target. Barrel gets knocked up into the air, and the curtain call doesn't yet have enough damage. Angel now has access to his ultimate. 30 seconds before Ben is alive and Beryl somehow survives. 
but the Elder doesn't get secured. Oh, it is still look available. At look at top lane as well. I think Don Juan's really afraid of the Juan Fung potential TP flank, which is why they don't want to commit to it. They'll say, you know what, we'll take the pick, but a lot of summoners were used. Noggery actually invested his flash, and Angel bought a lot of time. He's now upgraded that stopwatch into a Zonia, so he's going to get a huge amount of value out of that. While Bin died, the objective doesn't drop. Now, the good news for Don Juan is that they've already reset. They're back on the map. Bin will come back to life, but he's also got the teleport available to him. The Dragon Dance will start once more. Let's see who comes out on top. Winning this fight puts you potentially one Nexus away from winning the series. The amount of damage that can come in. Teleport and Flash is available for Juan Fung. TP's coming in, two of them from Sooning. SOFM's inside the pit. The True Shot Barrage flies across and Darwin starts to peel backwards. Nogri does have the Slicing Maelstrom, but look at Sword Art. He's trying to flank. Elders the focus. Will Darwin re-engage? No Flash for Nogri. I don't think they want to give it up. Ooh. That's a very big stun from Scatter the Week. Ton Fung's locked inside the pit. Nagari's going to get slowed down. That super soaker from SOFM doing tons of work. The Elder Dragon is secured by Sooning. The Slicing Maelstrom will be able to pick up the kill onto Wan Fung, but now it's Angel that's falling immediately after. What can Bin do? A two for one, but the Elder goes to Sooning. Oh, look at SOFM. Oh, Ghost's going to cancel his ultimate there to immediately get out of the situation. But while the team fight win does go to Dom Wan, the Elder Drake goes to Sooning. Cannon is a little bit low. He's got to be be careful, but Sooning have been able to flip this game on its head. Second game in a row where Elder Drake just seems to mean nothing to them. Good damage onto Bin. But he's gonna get the heal and he's gonna disengage. Sword Art waiting just in range of the leap. How on earth? Do you analyze who this benefits? Because yes, the Elder oh, lands on the side of Sunin. Yeah, it's the fact that they got the Elder, I think is the biggest thing, because number one, it denies it away from Don Juan, but it also buys you time, because you know what you can do now? Wait for the respawns, Baron, baby. You know that if they come to fight you, you have the advantage, the Elder Drake is yours, and you don't have to commit to the objective. Don't go for the 50-50, instead, just try to force the fight. I really like the way in which Sunin keep Don Juan trapped in this choke point with Angel and Sword Art. Really good ultimate from Noggery to actually just shut down Huang Feng and Angel, but the fight is already over at this point because the longer Dan Wan stay in the fight, the greater the risk is of them getting executed by this Elder. So getting at least two Elders off the board is a good news for Dan Wan, but now I just want to see Sunin go to the Baron, start the Baron, force Dan Wan into the fight, and they're going to start this objective right now. Every single game this finals has popped off and Sooning are looking at the Baron. If they're able to pick this up, they may continue what is the best World Championship run ever, but Dan Wan are not conceding it. They are challenging inside the pit. Nagari also has the ultimate available. Remember what we said, they don't have to finish the Baron, they just need a fight. Angel is hovering on the flank, but Dan Wan is aware of it. That ward will not spot them out, it's being countered by the control ward, and all Dan Wan need to do now oh. is buy time. 30 seconds until the Elder Drake is gone. As long as they can get a fight after that point, then they are happy. A lot of farm is being lost in the bot lane, Angel needs to go to it. And for now, Darmont will avoid catastrophe. And Vedius, for the first time in like 15 minutes, we get a brief moment of respite. Sooning still maintain a gold lead. That Elder Dragon has worn off. It's been a long time since I've checked in on any of the items, but Black Lever, Blade of the Ring King for Bin. You see the Oblivion Orb, as well as makings of a Death Cap for Nagari. Bin is going to look for a fight, but Showmaker and Beryl are here to help out. Death's Dance, Iceborne Gauntlet, Mirror Mana for Huan Fang. Ghost, by the way, has quietly amassed a ridiculous amount of damage <laughs> in four completed items, still sitting on that single control ward, but sure. we've seen him dancing around wait, fights wait, 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 a wait, gigantic this is not impact. Good. Bin will get some support from SOFM if you keep your eyes on the minimap, but Dom One are waiting, and Angel has teleported in oh, just a moment. Level 17, dude. Like, Angel is so strong. He's likely working towards uh, the Banshee's Veil to mitigate some of that. Well, number one, he really needs magic resistance. But number two, it also is a great item against both Kennen and Syndra, and Braum, too. So I think the itemization is great, and the sooner he gets it, the harder it's going to be for Dom One to play. Because, like, initially, when you look at how these comps work, typically, Dom One's comp is easier, right? The reason why it gets hard is because their engage is not reliable. They're very reliant on Noggery actually starting the fight off. And even then, their follow-up is not that great. Canyon is quite short range. Showmaker has to kind of rely on a stun landing to be able to actually get within range to deal the damage, which means these Sooning solo carries have a lot of freedom as long as they avoid the cannon, which basically means 
that Kennen is everything in the team yeah. fights for both teams. Noggery can win or lose the game. The thing is, it's there's a thing about LCK and and Kennens, and they're just very good they're at the They're exceptional. <laughs> We've seen at this tournament already. Sordot's gonna get rooted in place, forced to throw down that unbreakable will. He's still holding on to the flash, still holding on to the exhaust. That's the headbutt, the pulverize, the defensive Ooh. chase away, and he just gets blown up. The moment that ulti times out, it's a minute 45 Baron, Baron, to Baron. Elder. Angel's gonna get jumped on by Canyon, and this is five versus four, 35 oh, second gone. death timer, and the perfect execution used defensively there, trying to escape. That's about like an 80 second cooldown now at this point in the game. That's not gonna be available for a while. And with Sword Art dead, Darmwon have the best setup here for the, the Baron. There's still Flash ultimate available on Augury. One fun, no true shot barrage. Bin is making his way forward. Baron so low. Canyon is dropped low by Angel. He's dashed inside the pit. Knock up from Baron. Angel's trying to continue, but the Baron is secured by Don One. The slicing Maelstrom is slowing down the suiting engage. Bin forced to retreat. Don One get themselves a kill onto Jax. The curtain call tags Angel. And with the help of the follow up, it's Showmaker killing Angel. Now One Fun gets one back onto Showmaker, but three quick kills, as well as the Baron buff, and SOFM misses the Javelin toss. That's Chunk a crit. down, Ghost is chasing, and will most likely not get the kill. Unable to chase the very fast Nidalee through the jungle with Baron and Pound Minions. 30, 40 second death timers, they may be pushing oh, forward. Oh, they may very well look for that end and to think that it was just one big mistake that came through from Sword Art that could cost his team the game. TPs are available for Showmaker when he respawns. Sword Art looking to hold the line. SOFM jumping, pouncing forward. Will force Barrel backwards. Goes Golden to buy the time, but the Baron and Pound Minions are still hammering away on the Nexus start. The exhaust will slow down the inevitable death Deaths, but not the ace will not stop and save the base. Darn one, a one win away from being crowned world champions. What was that game? It was a stressful one for Dom One, that's for sure. They had Dragon Soul, they were looking clean, but then one big team fight where Angel was able to just pop off around the Baron is really where things started to swing in momentum. Sooning getting themselves a Baron buff, equalizing the gold, getting themselves the Elder. And then the game was decided off of a single pick onto Sword Art. Without, without him, without their engage, Sooning just couldn't contest that Baron. They couldn't buy more time, and Darmon immediately pounced. The execution in these team fights has been just sublime to watch. And I think you have to give so much credit to Suning here because they bounced back. They keep now, playing from a deficit. They do. Yeah. And I think it is important to recognize they were the underdogs coming into the series, right? Darmwan have got early leads multiple times. The lead they got in this game was exquisite. And at one play around Baron, Suning fought their way back well, in. Let's not even forget that, like, in the early game, Suning were put so far behind because of how Darmwan attacked Bin. Yeah. And I do think that Bin seems to be the crux of this team. So if Darmwan can shut down Bin, then Darmwan can look to secure themselves a world set championship. Set us up for the next one? Nope, you can. All right, let's take a look at Darmwan's Mercedes drive to victory in the final fights. <laughs> because I'm now going to do a lot more talking, yes. quick shot. So let's have a look at that final team fight. I like what Angel did diving into the back line, trying to kill Canyon, but then Canyon put himself in the middle of four other people, meaning that he was still able to smite and look at how much value he gets off the back of this locket as well. SOFM couldn't really get involved because he was just completely, I think he was stunned up or zoned out either way. There was nothing that he could do. And honestly, I think this was a bit of a mistake from Juan Fung, but you could argue that he was pretty much guaranteed to die there anyway. So he's like, I may as well take someone out with me. Um, but in any case, like that was the final fight that decided everything. Yes. And uh, like the more important part before that is the fact that Sword Art did die and while